this is not a joke or I'm not like having a laugh, but basically the car's come to me today and it runs on three cylinders when you start it. So they've, this is what they've changed just to try and fix a, a misfire on start up. Valve Tronics, um, position sensor, coolant temp sensor, map sensor, it seems, and um, camshaft position sensor, and an O-ring and the Valve Tronic motor. So basically, <laughs> they've changed all this and I've got to work out why it's running on three. So let's check it out, shall we? Really running rough now, awful. Pure fuel. Well, you know what they say, wet spark plug in the morning, shepherd's warning, nah, not really. Is it leaking or has it just got no compression? The valve's open, something like that. We need to do a bit more work, don't we? But there's definitely fuel there, so it's definitely fuel. So I just wanted to pause the video and clear up a few things, but a lot of you might be thinking, a lot of these people, why aren't you using a pressure transducer? Why aren't you using an exhaust pulse transducer? Why aren't you doing all the fancy stuff what everyone else is doing? Well, it's simple, I don't have them. If I had them, I'd use them. I've used them in the past, I don't have them at the moment at this particular place where I am. When I get them, I might make a video, but then again, maybe not, because there's that many people who've done it anyway. I think if you want to learn that, you can go and have a look at Mechanic Mindset, Darren. Darren's got a lot of stuff about that. So essentially, I have the tools I have. So I checked, have I got a spark just by pulling the plug out and grounding it? Easiest way to do it for anyone without any tools in it. We've got a spark, no problem. Have we got uh, any fuel? Yeah, we've got fuel in the cylinder. The plug isn't black, so it hasn't been overfueling. It's probably got fuel there because there's not enough compression to actually ignite the mixture. And that's what we're gonna come on to next in the video. Why did I do the pulse width modulation check with the power probe? Well, I did it just to show you how the DME sends a signal on the low tension, the low voltage side to the coil, which can then um, actually discharge the capacitor or the transistor, depends what type of coil it is inside the coil to induce the high voltage on the secondary line, the secondary windings, or the, as they say, the, the high tension side. And then similarly, to show you how a power supply to a coil looks like, I did all them on the power probe just to show you lot in case you'd never done it. But you don't need to do it because we've got a spark, so therefore we must have those things, otherwise we wouldn't have a spark. Let's carry on with the video. So what we've got here is we've got the intake valves on number four cylinder, my colleague's turning over as I'm looking with the old uh, bore cam. There's the piston at TDC there. As you can see, the intake valve isn't opening, so that's why we've got fuel. It's not that we've got no compression, we just don't have any air. Uh, simple as that. So basically, the, what I'm just about to pull off there before I switch the engine off and put the ignition on is uh, the Valvetronic motor itself, the power supply and the control command interface is the Valvetronic motor, which is uh, powered by the DME. What does it do? Well, the Valvetronic provides uh, variable valve timing and lift, but it also throttles the engine. On all BMWs with Valvetronic, you don't need a throttle motor. It's there as a backup. The engine idling is controlled by varying the, va varying the valve lift, so you don't need a throttle motor. You just don't need a throttle at all. Not one bit, basically. You just need an open throttle motor to allow the airflow to go into the inlet manifold. So when you actually do that and you start the engine again, it'll see there's an open circuit. The valve tronic will spring, is spring loaded. It'll go back to its base position. The throttle will then take over the throttling of the engine. So it won't be fully open, otherwise you'd have full throttle. The throttle will then close and it'll just open slightly. And it'll throttle the air just like it does with the valve tronic working. So we found the fault. The inlet valve isn't opening, or you know, the valves aren't opening on cylinder four. So the fuel is caused not because of a lack of compression, but as I said, because there's just simply not enough air for the correct fuel ratio of 14.7 to 1. So you just there's just not enough air in that engine. It won't ignite. Simple as that. So let's look at the Valtronic system in more detail on this. The only thing I can't tell you is why it was only on number four. I, I can only imagine I didn't have time to look anymore. There is an issue with the lift, lift part of it on the Valtronic on number four. But there was actually and also an issue with the motor itself as well. Let's check it out. The teeth which are on the motor that the guy changed. Now look at the state, the top two, the bottom one are quite reasonable, but if you look in between, they're starting to thin and blade out like little sharp blade, little blade discs. They're digging into the Valvetronic eccentric shaft teeth and that digging and that polishing you can see there is gonna stop the thing working properly and potentially it's gonna cause a lot of issues with the system. That's the main reason 
why the scar has failed. So as you can see, without valve tronic engaged, it's no misfire and it runs great. So there you are. Misfire and number four, valve tronic. You never would have believed it, would you? And just to finish off there, this is what the eccentric shaft receiving part looks like. So that's the bit the motor meshes in, that's the bit you just saw swinging. As you can see, it's not in great condition and that is exactly the main reason why the valve tronics fail on these cars. There's a special grease you can put in there, which mainly no one ever does when they replace things. So that's basically what happens to it. It wears out and everything starts to go haywire. Well, that's about it for me. Uh, if you've enjoyed that video, please subscribe and give us a share. Help me build my channel up. Um, up to 62,000 views now for December and it's only halfway through December that's the most I've ever had and I'm hoping I can get 100,000 views this month so onwards and upwards again my job is to provide information to anyone who wants to learn how to be a fault finder I don't work for a YouTube algorithm I don't do things for robots I do things for you for real people and my passion is helping people become better at fault finding because that's what I love and that's what I want to teach people thanks for watching see you next time